and welcome to today's practice. My name is Karen Abreu and I'll be guiding you on an open restorative flow. It's a flow for those days that we need an extra opening in the body and um, I don't know but sometimes we tend to work out a lot or even work a lot and we just need that practice that's going to be able to release the tensions and also just provide us a very restorative feeling so we can connect to our bodies, we can relax, we can feel good and establish good foundations in our lives so we are able to keep doing the things we do, keep up with our routine and mainly keep up being grateful because we are able to be more grateful when we feel good. I truly believe that well-being it's a huge key for cultivate, cultivating gratefulness on a daily basis. So, yeah, for today's practice, we are going to need a tennis ball. In case you don't have a tennis ball, you can use a lime. That's not completely ripe yet, so we can massage certain areas on the body and also release the fascia and certain tensions. We are also going to need two straps. You can get blocks to get yourself comfortable in certain positions in case you need to adjust and just feel very comfortable. And I also recommend you having some pillows around just in case you wanna feel extra comfort and bring more of that restorative feeling to the practice. Another thing that it's important is that if you're in a cold place, you wanna keep yourself warm during, during the practice. So it's nice if you have warm clothes or just a very nice blanket for Shavasana so you can keep yourself heated to keep yourself restored so that's it and keep in mind that you are in control of your practice so if you have any sort of injuries or experience any sort of sharp pain during the practice pull out Go to a restorative pose like Balasana, Child's Pose or Shavasana where you're just laying down your back and uh, be mindful of the limits of your body. Always listen to your body. Your body always speaks to you from a place of silence. So when you're able to silence out world, out world and go inwards, when you're able to silence your mind, then you're able to understand what your body is trying to communicate with you. So always make decisions from your inner wisdom and never from, from your ego here in this case. <sighs> Thank you so much for practicing with me today and let's get started. So for today's practice, we're going to get started on a different position than what we usually do. We are going to use our two blocks for a supported fish pose. So find yourself here on your mat, nice and easy. Place one block on the level two and the other block can be also on the level two or if you want to intensify the pose, place it on level three here. And it's important that you keep the level full block right here on the end of your scapula, on the middle back, where your scapula ends and starts the middle black, uh, back. So here you come and accommodate the second block. Make sure it's nice. And then the other block right under your back where you have the little bump on the back, you know? And from here you can choose to keep your soles of the feet on the floor or stretch your legs. Your arms can be in T arms here. And just take a deep breath to cleanse side out. Right now we are doing a little heart opening, so we can start the practice with a heart open. If 
you want to intensify a little bit more the pose, you can also bring your hands together, hugging the elbows. Trying to keep your neck nice and long, trying to keep your spine nice and long here. On each inhalation, you bring space, you create space. On each exhalation, you release. Starting to be mindful of your breath. Bringing a conscious breathing. You can even start activating your ujjayi breath. By making a little constriction on your epiglottis and passing the air right on the back of your throat. It's going to be a sound similar to the ocean waves. Inhale deeply through your nose. Exhale deeply through your nose. Opening your heart, tuning into your body. Inhale deeply, exhale deeply. At any moment, if you feel extremely discomfort, you're welcome to put your arms in T shape again. In case everything is good and nice for you, I invite you to. Change the crossing of your arms. So you can hug your elbows on the other side. Inhale deeply. Exhale, side out. Once more, inhale deeply, exhale, side out. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your nose, coming back to your Ujjayi breath. Noticing if there is any tension in your body and on it. Each exhalation, you release any unnecessary tension from your body. Inhale, bring your arms over your head. Exhale, the arms again. Inhale, bring your arms alongside your body. Pressing the palms down, grounding towards the earth. Pressing your elbows down, grounding towards the earth. Tuck your chin onto your chest and slightly start to come up from this pose with the helps of your hands and elbows. Coming up. And briefly here in the Dandasana, staff pose. Notice the effects of this asana, of this previous position, on the energy distribution in your body. Ground through the palms of your hands on the floor. Stretch your legs in front of you, activating your legs, your kneecaps, flexing your feet. Slowly tucking your chin on your throat. Micro bend on the elbows if you tend to hyperextension here. And then last one. Slowly start. 
to find your tabletop position. So you can go to your child's pose. Feel free to grab one of your pillows and put them between your legs so you can sit on the pillow and the pillow is above your heels, under your thighs. Move your blocks here to the side. Just go for child's pose, a very restorative child's pose where we are creating this gap here between the legs and just allowing ourselves to release. Inhale, arms up, gaze up. Exhale, slowly, gently, very gently, you bend forward into your Balasana child's pose. Your forehead is on the ground. Your arms are relaxed. You're just surrendering to this pose. Observing how your body is feeling right now. Observing the results of that chest opening. And try to compare how you're feeling right now with five minutes ago before we started practice. What are the differences, the subtle differences? Where do you feel heat or cold? Where you feel release or tension? Just breathe in deeply through your nose. And out through your nose. Keeping your Ujjayi breath. So you can stay focused and warm for this restorative practice. Inhale. And you start slowly and very gently with the helps of your hands coming up vertebra by vertebra. Very slowly. And the head is less thing to come up. You can open your eyes, especially if you're feeling dizzy and lightheaded. And just observe the dynamics of the energy here throughout your spine. Your hands can be with the palms down on the thighs so you can feel grounded. Deep inhalations, long exhalations. And now here from this position, you're going to slowly remove your pillows, lifting your hips up and start to find your easy pose, your cross-legged pose. You can sit on a block so you can have an easier time to align your spine here, keep your spine aligned, your neck aligned as almost as if someone is pulling a gold thread from the top of the crown of your head towards the ceiling. And from the hips down, you're feeling completely grounded. Both sitting bones here on the block or on the floor, depending on how you're going to make an option for this pose. And from here, you can start closing your eyes, keeping your Ujjayi breath. You're starting to set an intention for this practice, today's practice. And your intention can be, for example, to bring three things you're grateful for today. And keep in mind those three things during your whole practice.
Today I'm grateful for dedicating some time to take care of myself during this practice. I'm also grateful for being able to breathe. Bringing such good air inside my lungs and being able to keep myself alive. And I'm also grateful for all the experiences that brought me into here and now today. Keep connecting to your breath, bringing the three things you're grateful for, or setting whatever intention you want to set for today's practice. And a long inhale. Long exhales, observing the position of your spine right now, where you find steadiness and ease. Stira and Sukha. Right now I invite you to change the crossing of your legs so the leg that was in the bottom goes to the top and the one that was on the top goes to the bottom and notice here the differences in the dynamics of your weight distribution on your sitting bones differences in tension in some areas that you might bring some more space by breathing right now. Keeping your spine nice and long. Almost as if you are a parasol. You know, when you go to the beach and you take a parasol and you put it on the sand, you're firm like a parasol on the sand, but at the same time, you're comfortable soothing into that sand. From here, we can start with a Dirga Pranayama. That is the full yogic breath. So every time we breathe in, we start making our bellies big. Then the air goes through the ribs. The ribs get expanded and big. And the last to expand and get big is the chest. And when we breathe out, the chest, chest gets smaller, the ribs get smaller, and the belly gets smaller. So you're breathing through your belly, ribs and chest. Breathe out through the chest, ribs and belly. Breathing through the belly, ribs and chest. Breathe out through the chest, ribs, and belly. Breathing through the belly, ribs, and chest. Breathe out through the chest, ribs, and belly. Breathing through the belly, ribs, and chest. Breathe out through the chest, ribs, and and belly and you can keep going on your own rhythm belly ribs and chest and your own rhythm chest ribs and belly maybe trying to equalize your inhalations with your exhalations so you can count one two three and then exhale three two, one, keep breathing, one, two, three, 
and exhale. Three, two, one. One, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, three. Coming back to your natural breath. Removing the block from under your hips. Finding your easy pose on the other side. Changing the crossing of your legs once more. So the bottom leg goes to the top, the top leg goes to the bottom. And from here, you're going to breathe in, arms up, hands up, look up. And breathe out slowly, very gently, bending forward, drawing the navel in, creating space between the vertebrae. And if it's accessible for you, you can put the, the forehead on the floor. If this is not possible for you, you're very welcome to bring a block under your forehead. And here you can choose what is the level of the block that is going to contemplate you the most today. On each inhalation, you create space. On each exhalation, you release. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Inhale back to center, arms up, hands up, gaze up, and exhale. Now your left arm is going to your right, to your left side. You can put your forearm, your left forearm on your left side, and you're going to be doing this lateral stretch here. Your right arm up. Inhale, and on the exhale, you bring gently the right arm above the head. Inhale deeply, exhale. If being on, your, on the forearm is too much for you, you can gently just press your leg up, rounding the palm of your left hand on the floor. Keeping this integrity on your stretch. Trying to observe where you have tensions and breathing air, new fresh prana to those areas of tension in your body. Exhale, go a little bit further. Inhale back to center and observe the differences between the sides of your body. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, going to the other side. So now the forearm to the right side, your right forearm to the right side. Stretching your left ribs. Left arm up. Inhale big and then long exhalation, bringing the left arm above the head, alongside your head. If being on the forearm is too much for you, feel welcome to just press for the palms of your hand, grounding and lifting yourself a little bit up. Inhale deeply, exhale, keeping your ujjayi breath. Inhale deeply, exhale. 
exhale, go a little bit further. And on the next inhalation, you're coming back to center. And observe the differences on your side bodies. Inhale, arms up, hands up, gaze up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Once more, changing the crossing of your legs, bottom leg to the top, top leg to the bottom. Inhale, arms up, gaze up. Exhale, bending forward very gently. If you want to, you can place a block under your forehead or simply bring your forehead to the ground. Make sure both of your sitting bones are grounded. So you can even use your palms of the hands to pull you backwards. To push you backwards. Until you find your sitting bones grounded. Inhale, rise up, arms up, gaze up. Exhale now, right forearm to the right side, stretching your left legs. Exhale deeply, keeping your ujjayi breath. Inhale, back to center. And exhale, bending to the left side, so left forearm on the left side, stretching through the right hip ribs. Inhale deeply, exhale, keeping the ujjayi breath. Inhale back to center, hands up, gaze up, exhale, hands to heart center. Take a moment here to notice how you're feeling right now. How is the energy distribution in your body? Any lingering sensation, any tension, any release. Breathe in those three things you're grateful for or the intention you set for your practice today. And sigh out, let go everything that doesn't serve you. Inhale, and slowly, you start to find your tabletop position. So the knees are aligned with the hips, the hands aligned with your shoulders. And here you can have your feet flexed if this is more comfortable for your knees, or pressing top of your feet on the floor. Try to make your index fingers parallel here and uh, distribute the weight with a spider grip here on your hand so you don't have all your weight on the wrists. Most of the weight is even on the index and on the thumbs. And from here you're going to look forward and start arching the back with your inhale, lifting the tailbone up. And on the exhale, you're going to curve the spine very slowly and gently, tucking the chin and the tailbone. Inhale, do the opposite movement, arching the back, lifting up the tailbone, you look up, even gaze up, if it's possible for you. Your shoulder blades are together. Exhale, shoulder blades going apart, tucking the chin, the tailbone, curving the spine. And you can start making some little wave motions together with this cat and cow, doing what feels good for you, what feels best for your body. Inhale, and exhale, your own rhythm, your own pace. Finding here the movements that feel best for you. Inhale. Exhale. 
exhale. Inhale. And exhale. the back, gaze it up, look to the tailbone, and then exhale, releasing any unnecessary tension from your body, just making this feel very good for you, exhale, on the next inhale, you come to a neutral position, back to the center of the body. And just release. You can sit on your heels, place your palms on the tops of your knees and just feel the sensations here you've just created on your wrists, your shoulders, how is the energy swirling on your spine and gently, very gently, we can start finding our down dog. So if you have any socks, like I do, because it was, it was pretty cold here where I live, you can remove the socks so you make sure you have good grip. Start finding your down facing dog. So hands parallel, feet parallel, and start slowly lifting up your hips up. Maybe pedaling this dog, walking this dog here on the spot, stretching one leg, and then the other leg. Make sure your index fingers are pointing forward here. You're distributing the weight throughout your whole palm and fingertips, inner knuckles. A micro bend here on your elbows in case of tend to hyperextension. And the priority on downward dog is to make the spine align. So if you cannot put your heels on the floor for this one, you can bend your knees and keep your spine very much aligned and elongated. Your neck is also elongated, so you can even gaze towards your belly button, towards your navel. You can keep pedaling, walking your dog here. making this feel very good for you. And now, inhale back to center, and slowly you start to walk your hands backwards, so you can find yourself in Uttanasana, forward bend. Let go of your head here, release everything. You can even hug your elbows and wiggle side to side. Drawing the navel in. You can even put a greater band on your knees in case your hamstrings are really feeling tight. Inhale back to center. With the helps of your hands, you can halfway lengthen, trying to find your flat back. If you cannot reach the floor, then you can put your hands on your shins or on the beginning of your thighs. But just try avoiding putting tension here on your knees. So don't put your hands on your knees here, either on the shins or on the thighs. And lengthen your spine, finding a flat back. Exhale, go into Uttanasana once more. And here you can even choose to have a wider stance on your legs, bringing your feet a little bit wider than your hips. You can keep your feet parallel to each other here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, Uttanasana, bending forward again. And notice what are the differences between having this wide leg Uttanasana and the other one where you have your 
feet align with your hips. You're also welcome to hug your elbows here. Draw the navel in. You can flex your toes and pull your toes upwards in case you want to intensify the stretch. Just wiggle here side to side. This is also an inversion, so here we are also getting some benefits some of the inversion to your body, you know. When your head is below your heart, bringing some humble qualities to your practice. Also, improving the heart circulation, the blood flow in the body. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, heel toes your feet until they're hip width apart again. And from here, your hands on your waist. Inhale, exhale, bend forward again. And on the next inhale, you start rising up, vertebra by vertebra. You can put a huge bend on your knees here. And very slowly coming up. The last thing to come up is your head. And stay here in Tadasana for a while, just to observe the effects on your body. Your palms are facing towards the future. See how your daily tendencies are being showed up here in Tadasana. How you distribute your weight on the corners of your feet. If you tend to kind of collapse your ankles and collapse your knees. Or if you tend to align them up. Slowly tuck off the tailbone here so you can elongate your lumbar spine. Chin parallel to the floor. Chest is open, so roll your shoulders up and back to help you with the opening of the chest. Tadasana, mountain pose. Where do you feel tension or release? How do you feel your legs right now, your hamstrings, the back of your knee joints? Just try to observe here the small details. How your body is responding to each movement. Inhale, arms up, raise up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And from here now, you can take your line or your tennis ball. <laughs> and we are going to start. From this position here in Tadasana, put the line or the ten tennis ball under the left foot and you just start going up a little bit with the feet. So the line or the tennis ball is going to be here on your heels. And then you just bring this ball to the balls of your feet and to your, under your toes. Just playing here with these movements. Trying to find some sweet spots to give yourself a massage and release the fascia, release the tension under your feet. We stay on our feet like most of the time during the day and the feet carry all of our body weight. So we should really be mindful and grateful for this feet's work and give our feet some attention, some love so they can keep doing their amazing job they do every day. If you find it hard to stay in balance while you're making these movements, you're welcome to place one of your hands right next to a wall. Inhale back to center and now we can go to the other foot. The other foot also deserves some love. <laughs> so we can just start 
moving this ball or the line <laughs> under the right foot. Make sure your line, if you choose a line, if you don't have a tennis ball, make sure this line is not completely right, you know, because then it's going to be smashy. But it's a nice idea in case you don't have any tennis ball in your house. Coming here for the balls of the feet, under the toes, then to the heels, passing through the feet, the foot arches, and just releasing all this tension under the foot. Being 100% now, here in the present moment. Maybe saying thank you, feet, for all the nice work you've been doing all these years. Talking to yourselves, talking to your body, really establishing this intimate connection with your own being. This is also what yoga is about. Yoga, it's also about this union of mind, body and soul. We are not just our bodies, but in this experience here, we are having on this dimension. We rely on our bodies to evolve and experience life. So we should work together with our bodies. I say bodies because we have a physical body, we have an energetical, emotional, mental body. So yeah, it's a lot of bodies to take care of. <laughs> Inhale back to center. And now I just invite you to stay here in Tadasana for a moment and perceive all the benefits, all the sensations they've just created in your body by doing the simple exercise of rolling on a fruit or on a tennis ball. How are the soles of your feet right now? My soles of my feet are feeling so relaxed and released. I even feel a very nice scent on the air because of the lime. I love the smell of lime. So refreshing. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Sigh down. I hope you enjoyed this line practice. I find this to be so relaxing. I really, really love the smell of the lime also that comes afterwards. So yeah, this feels so nice to me. It feels really, really nice. Anyways, uh, so let's go back here to Tadasana. And slowly we are going to raise our arms up, hands up. Exhale, dive into forward bend, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up, placing your hands on the floor, and from here you can start walking your hands forward. Until you find your down facing dog once more. Take a moment here to observe the differences between this down dog and the first down dog you need. Inhale, create length and exhale, let it go. Inhale, right leg up. And exhale, you're going to bring your right foot right between your hands. From here. You just try to open your chest, creating some space. And exhale, bringing your left knee on the floor. Right now, you're going to bring your right hand and put it on the inner side of your foot, your front foot. And you're just going to heel toe your front foot a little bit more to the lateral of your mat. Feel free to stay here on the outer edge of your right foot and even feeling your pinky toe right here grounded if this feels good to you opening up your right knee to the side if you want to you can keep your back foot flexed or even put the top of the back foot on the floor too 
Inhale deeply. Exhale. Release. Go into this lizard variation. You feel free to stay here. Or if you want some extra sensation and extra stretching, you can place your forearms on the floor. Drawing the navel in. Not collapsing here onto your shoulders, but keeping some integrity here on the shoulders. And you can wingly, uh, wingle here side to side. Slightly, just to loosen up your groin area a little bit more. Coming back to that intention you set in the beginning of the practice or those three things you're grateful for. Really feeling deeply inside your heart. Paying attention to how you face challenging situations on your mat is also an indicator of how you face these challenging situations outside of your mat too. So how do you tend to behave when things start getting challenging? Right now you're probably releasing a lot of tension from your hips and the hips is an area in the body where we tend to, stand, to store a lot of emotions here. So, just let it go, everything that doesn't serve you anymore. All those stored emotions and feelings, let it go. Inhale back to center. And slowly you can put your palms grounded to help you come out of the pose. Firstly, bringing your right knee back here to the center and then just lifting up your hips a little bit more. And now you can bring your right leg to meet the left leg. Tuck your toes and slowly go into our facing dog from here. Deep inhalations, long exhalations. On the next inhalation, you bring your left leg up. And exhale, bringing the left foot between your hands. First, opening your chest here, grounding. Inhale. And exhale, bringing the right knee onto the floor. Here you have once more the option of keeping your back foot flexed or the top of the back, back foot on the floor. Slowly start to bring your left hand into the side of your front foot and heel toe your front foot to the lateral of your mat. Feel free to stay here or to even open your left knee to the side coming to the edges of your left foot, feeling your pinky toe grounded. Inhale deeply, exhale. Inhale deeply and exhale. Once more, if you want an extra stretch, especially if you did it on the other side, you come to the forearms. And maybe start here rocking side to side to release up a little bit more that groin area. Drawing the navel in. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Letting go of every unnecessary tension in the body. Inhale deeply, 
exhale, let go. Paying attention to your emotions that might be rising to your heart right now. Just allow yourself to feel and process those emotions. Try not to collect, collapse here onto your shoulders, keeping some integrity on the shoulders. Keep inviting those emotions to release and let go. Few more breaths here on the side. Inhale back to center and slowly start placing the palms of your hands grounding on the floor helping you to come up, open up your chest and slowly bringing your left leg back to center and lifting up your hips a little bit before you bring your left leg back. Go into your downward facing dog. And here from down dog, you can look to the front of your mat and start walking your feet towards the front of your mat. Make sure your feet now are a little bit wider than your hips. And from here, you inhale, lengthen, flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, start flexing your knees, coming to a malasana, a yogic squat. Pressing through the outer hand edges of your feet. I'm just going to turn so you can see me. Pressing through the outer edges of your feet here. Using your elbows to spread your knees out. Hands in prayer position in front of your body. And then you can just release. Finding your... Finding yourself laying on your back, vertebra by vertebra, stretching your legs, stretching your arms. Feeling the sensations. And right now, I invite you to find your seated position so you can get your straps. And you are going to need big loops on your straps. How big they are supposed to be, we are about to find out because it depends on the measurements of your body. But just make sure they are big enough so you can adjust them comfortably. So right now I have them very big. I'm going to get one of the straps. Can lay down again with your straps close. I'm going to get one of the straps and I'm going to place on the balls of my right foot here. And I'm going to put my right leg on the floor while I'm passing my left leg inside the other edge of the loop. Just going to make the loop a little bit bigger and stretching this left leg up. So one side of the loop I have here on the right foot, right on the balls of the right foot, and the other edge of the loop I have here on this hip flexor or the groin crease of the left leg. Right now, it's already feeling so good here. In case you don't have another strap, you just have one strap. You can make this exercise by just 
Grab your hair behind your calf and letting your hips get a very nice distraction here. Releasing all the tension. In case you have a second strap, it's just to take the second strap, putting on the balls of your left foot. Make sure you don't have any metal part touching your body here and hurting yourself. And the other edge of the loop, you're just going to bring behind your back and above your ears. Right here, well, we have uh, this bump on the back, you know, you can put it right on the bump of the back of the back of the head and make sure this is not hurting your ears here, okay? So just put it above the ears, find your sweet spot. Just make sure your head is not going to be lifting from the ground. So if you need to create more space, make your loop even bigger. And now you can just release. This is so good for the body. I really love doing this pose. And right now we're really working here on the groin crease area of the leg, creating a distraction. This is the term they use in physiotherapy, creating space on your body. You can have your arms in T or you can hug your elbows above your head. I particularly love to hug my elbows above my head here and just feel this release. Be mindful here of your knee joints. So if you want, you can creep up, keep a very almost invisible micro band on the left knee joint. <sighs> Making sure your spine is grounded, your lumbar spine is grounded. Your thoracic spine is grounded, your shoulders are grounded, and just release here onto this very restorative asana. Make sure that the bottom strap it's not cutting your blood circulation here on the left leg. So if you feel the necessity of adjusting and making the loop even bigger on the bottom, you can do it. Just make sure you're not pressing at the point that you're cutting your blood circulation. Inhale, big, exhale, side out. You can start releasing your body, releasing your breath. When we are 100% relaxed, it's when we start our inner journey of paying attention to our to what our bodies want to communicate with us. Inhale back to center. And now with the helps of your hands, you're going to release the strap from the balls of your left foot. Bring the strap behind your head here. And you're going to hold right next to your hip flexor of the left leg and release your left leg down while you're now putting the strap on the balls of your left foot transferring your right leg inside the other edge of the loop now we just changed here so you have the strap on your hip flexor here, on the groin area of your left, right leg, and on the balls of your left foot. You can catch the strap that you left above your head 
and just bringing it back to the balls of your right foot. And perceive here if you need any readjustments on the bottom loop strap, on the top strap, making sure the strap does not press in your ears, metal parts away from your body. And notice the differences between one side of the body and the other side of the body here. You can bring your arms in T right by your side or you can hug your elbows. Now changing the crossing of your elbows. And release. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Releasing any tension. Releasing everything that doesn't serve you no more. Finding yourself completely here and now, 100% in the present moment. Almost like if you're able to have completely awareness of everything that is happening at your body at the same time. Cultivate this awareness. Inhale deeply, exhale. Inhale. Inside out, exhale, let go. Using your breath to connect with your inner world, activating your parasympathetic nervous system so you can relax profoundly onto this pose. Using your breath to connect with your prana, your life force energy. Deep inhalation. Long exhalation. Your breath awareness really makes you go deeper into your asana practice. Be mindful of your knee joint here. So if you need to put a tiny little micro band on your right knee joint, just do it for your own safety. And always be mindful of flexing your feet so you can protect those joints too. Inhale back to center and very carefully, slowly removing the strap from the balls of your right foot. Bring the strap behind your head. With the help of your hand, you can even lower that left, that right leg down and removing the bottom strap too, here onto your side. Going to Shavasana. Right now here in Shavasana, I invite you to engage your whole body. Engage, engage your muscles, engage your legs, engage your shoulders, engage your arms, your hands, engage your toes, engage everything, engage your core, your kneecaps, and now release on the exhale. Sinking deep into the floor, feeling your body heavy. Shavasana. I invite you to stay here, going through a little meditation with me. You just need to visualize what I'm about to say. And slowly let go of everything. Let go even of your breath. You don't need to be counting your breath or controlling it anymore. Coming back to your natural breath. This little meditation is going to help you to release 
even more your body going to deeper states of relaxation. You are going to slowly start relaxing your right toes, your right ankle, lower leg, right knee joint, upper leg, right hip joint. Feel your right leg completely relax on the floor. Relax your left toes, left ankle, lower leg, left knees, upper leg, left hip, and feel your left leg completely relaxed on the floor. Relax your hips, the bottom of your spine. Relax your neck, your shoulders, your head is heavy on the floor. Relax your hands heavy on the floor, your forearms, your elbows, your upper arms, heavy on the floor. Relax your face, the space between your eyebrows. Your eyes completely relax. Relax your lips, your jaw. You can even bring a little opening to your lips area so it helps you to relax your jaw. Relax your neck, your chest. Relax your abdominal area. Bring this deep relaxation to your inner organs, relaxing your stomach, your intestines, your lungs, your liver, your pancreas. Your thyroid gland completely relax. Your bladder Relax your pelvic floor, your sacrum. Feel yourself completely surrendering to the ground. Grounding yourself into Mother Earth. Feeling all the nourishment from Mother Earth. And now that you feel yourself safe and grounded, I invite you to think about the three things you're grateful for or to think about the intention you set at the beginning of the practice. can imagine your whole life as a white big canvas knowing that only you have the power to paint that canvas and you can start painting those three things you're grateful for on this canvas or even painting the intention you set at the beginning of the practice onto this canvas. What are the colors you're going to use, the movements you're going to imprint. What are the smells you want this canvas to have? Maybe a smell of wine, of lavender, a smell of a calm breeze on the ocean on a very sunny and pleasant day. How light this canvas is going to be. How colorful. 
já vai com os dedos. Painting to the minor details of these things that make you so happy. Remembering that things are not only things, but situations, sensations, inspirations. You have the power to paint your life canvas. You have the power to manifest whatever you want to manifest in your own life. You have the power throughout your breathing, throughout your moving, to bring peace and quiet and restorative qualities to your daily life. You have the option to always enrich your life, your moments. Every minute, every second counts. Every minute, every second is an opportunity to shift. And change. And evolve. And let go and surrender. And see the magic on the simple, tiny things that makes us life so special. And slowly you can bring yourself some awareness back to the room you are right now back to your body you can start wriggling your toes your hands bringing some small movements to your feet your arms your legs maybe stretching your whole body slowly very gently you turn to one of your favorite sides you're into your fetal position maybe making your biceps as a pillows feeling all the sensations in your body right now Slowly and very gently, with the help of your hands and arms, you start bringing yourself to a seated position. And remain seated here for a while. Open your chest. Grounding throughout your sitting bones. Just allow yourself to feel... grounded
slowly and very gently. Inhale deeply, preparing for the OM. Om Shanti 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 Bow yourself Showing great gratitude for your practice Gratitude for yourself, stepping on your mat today and taking care of yourself. Gratitude for all the masters and gurus that spread their knowledge throughout the years. And thanks to this, we can be here today, right now, also enriching our experience. Bring your palms to your forehead so you can see things with clarity in front of your lips so you can speak words of truth and in front of your heart so you can always follow the wisdom of your heart with all your bravery and courage to live the most experienced life experience you're going to go through you can maybe smile Slowly opening your eyes and find yourself present and ground. May the benefits of this practice be dedicated to all sentient beings. And may it be peace and love in this entire world. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.